Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Knockwood Offensive Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide for Season 4. Footage is from the PTR, so changes are possible, although unlikely. In the area around the first boss, you have to clear all the ballistas and you find a bunch and variety of different mobs. The longbows are going to shoot arrows on the ground that you need to keep dodging. The plane stomper has a big area around him, so melee beware, and he also has a disrupting shout that you need to interrupt, otherwise he does a bunch of AoE damage to your whole party. And the war spears are going to charge a ranged player and leave a very nasty stacking dot on them. If you're fighting two of these and they charge the same player, be prepared for a lot of pain as the bleed is going to be ticking for a lot. Some of the packs also have Horn Sounder with a Rally the Clan which is uninterruptible spell that you need to knock up CC or stun somehow otherwise all the other mobs are going to start doing more damage. And there's also Beast Masters with small birds, they'll try to rally the birds to fixate on a player and change them, this one is also uninterruptible so save a stun or CC. The first boss is going to summon an ad that is going to run across the battlefield and try to break the ballistra across it. You have to slow it down and kill it before it succeeds to do that. As at the same time the ballista is charging and once it's done somebody needs to run to it and click it so it fires to the boss. It does a little bit of damage to the boss and it stuns it preventing it from casting a huge AoE that is going to wipe your party. After that new ballistas start charging and another ad is going to come up and try to break it, so rinse and repeat that part. And while doing that be aware that the boss has two more abilities that he is going to be casting frequently, shards of stone is just an AoE that hits everybody in your party, be prepared to heal through it after it's done and then there's a tectonic slam big circle around the boss, just make sure you're not in sight. Quick tip here, you can fire the ballistas as soon as they're ready, you don't have to wait for the boss to start casting his AoE ability. The area around the second boss features several packs with totems, small mini bosses and few mobs around them. The name mobs are going to try to do AoE to your party using the totems so you can focus it down first and interrupt their storm bolts to reduce the amount of damage that your party is going to be taking. But always save an interrupt for the Storm Speaker's Tempest channeling ability as it starts doing heavy AoE to your party and leaves a dot on everyone. So this is the highest priority interrupt in all of those pools. Apart from the totem pools there's also a patrol around the boss, a big lizard and a few storm shields. The storm shields are going to shield themselves, burst through the shields quickly as if they expire without you damaging them they're going to do AoE damage to your party. Interrupt all of the lizard's thunder strikes. Make sure you're not in melee when he casts Thunderclap and if he targets somebody with the chain lightning run away from your party as you're going to take damage but if you're close to other players it's going to jump to them and damage them as well. After you kill all the totems in the area you summon the second boss the Raging Tempest. One of his main abilities is Lightning Strike, every player has a big circle around them, explodes in a little bit so make sure you do not overlap these and be prepared to heal up after. And he'll also constantly spit out orbs around him that are going to start crawling towards him. You wanna soak all of these because doing so gives you a stacking damage increase buff caps at 10. And you'd rather have that instead of the boss when he goes into electric storm. 15 seconds channel that does heavy AoE damage to everybody in your party. It happens when the boss reaches 100 energy and you have to be prepared with all of your defensives and healing cooldowns to survive through this part. All of that keeps repeating, keep in mind that the lightning strike blue circles also kill orbs around them, in case you couldn't soak some of them, and the boss also gets a buff called surge of power that increases the damage that he does to the tank, but this one is purgeable so if you have the capability to do so, definitely take advantage. In the area before the third boss you have to kill several named mobs in order to summon him and always save an interrupt for their deadbolt volley as it does a lot of damage to your party. They're also going to shatter your soul reducing the damage that you do but you want to walk on top of your ghost in order to remove this effect. The dead speakers are going to channel an ability called chant of the dead. Big green circle on the ground that you need to move out from and also try to drag the mobs out of it as well as they will get above if they stay in sight. Interrupt the rotting winds from the Ohuna birds as they not only do AoE damage in front of them but they also reduce the healing that players in your party take. And any spare interrupts you can send at the dead bolts of the corruptors who are also going to cast bows around the area. They explode in a little bit so just move out of them. 
You probably don't want to pull some beast colors in the area as they summon little dogs around them. You can airy them down, but they do not count towards your trash percentage, so they're not very effective mobs to pull. Other pools will have Ryzen Warriors that mortal strike your tank and Ryzen Mystics that are going to cast Swift Wind. Simply interrupt those and keep going around the area until you kill all the named mobs. That allows you to summon the third boss, Terra and Maruk. Terra is not going to move around, instead she's firing quick shots which does single target damage to random players in your party. And then she's randomly going to jump to a new location. At the same time Maruk is going to be casting Frightful Roar, big purple circle on the ground, stay out of it unless you want to take a bunch of damage and get feared. He'll also cast Brutalize, just a tank buster that your tank needs to mitigate, but nevertheless be prepared to heal them up. And then at 100% energy each boss does their main ability. Terra marks every player with a Gale Arrow, you wanna stack these before they expire, when they do a lot of damage and summon tornadoes coming out from each of the players. Stacking makes it easier to dodge them as they do a lot of damage and knock you back and keep in mind that they'll start moving back in at some point so you have to dodge them on the way back as well. Shortly after Terra is also going to cast Repel, which turns into an interruptible spell that pushes everybody back. While Maruk is casting his trademark ability, those big swirlies that come out of it towards the players, you need to dodge them and stay out of them as they explode in a short while. All of these mechanics will keep happening until you manage to kill the bosses that do share their health pool. After that you wanna use the back door to the last boss area where you cannot fly but you can sneak in on the back of your dragon by landing on the top of the mountain just before you lose the ability to fly. Before the last boss you have to kill two mini bosses that engage in combat as soon as you pull the boss. Batak has a huge frontal while Balara has a charge so always try to stay behind them and dodge their frontals. Dodge the spear swirlies that they throw on the ground and interrupt the roar that Batak is going to try and cast. If he succeeds he fears everyone on top of doing damage. Trying to DPS them evenly is also advised as one of them enrages as soon as you kill the other. The last boss is Balakar Khan and he has 3 phases, at the start he's going to cast rendering strike on your tank that leaves a nasty bleed so make sure to heal through that. And be aware of your positioning when he's about to cast his main ability called Iron Spear. He marks the player, throws the spear at him which does a whole bunch of damage and then charges at their location. You can use that rock to prevent the boss from moving too far away but in any case make sure you're not in front of them when they do the charge. Their last ability is called Upheaval, it's a huge frontal that you need to dodge and also all the players are marked. With brown circles that do a bunch of damage make sure you do not overlap them. At 60% phase 2 starts the boss is now immune to damage and there is a storm raging with a lot of swirlies on the ground that you need to keep dodging, everybody is taking constant damage. There are 4 adds that you need to kill in order to transition to phase 3 and they'll keep casting storm bolts. They do a lot of single target damage so make sure you're interrupting and stunning the adds, even CCing them if you need to in order to survive this transition phase. All cooldowns, defensives, even bloodlust should be committed to this phase in order to reach the last one. If you succeed you transition into phase 3 which is very similar to phase 1 but the abilities of the boss are now enhanced. You have to keep dodging the boost while it's on the ground and the spear now not only does damage but it also sucks in all the players into the player's location. At least you can still use the rock to dodge the charge. The tank buster now leaves a debuff that you need to dispel, not only it's a dot but it increases the damage that the tank takes. And upheaval now leaves permanent puddles on the ground that remain there after the ability is done. The boss will keep cycling through all of these abilities and if you manage to survive them you successfully complete knockout offensive. Check my channel for the rest of the Mythic Plus Dungeon Guides for Season 4. I'll see you guys there, now get out of here.